three, two, one. And we are officially live. All right, all right, all right. It's Mike Wall back again with another episode of the Agent Revolution podcast where we deconstruct the biggest challenges facing today's real estate agents so that they can build a sustainable, profitable, and most of all, fulfilling real estate business. I'm fired up today, man. Fresh from EXPCon in Las Vegas and ready to drop some value. I got my man, Nick Good, here to talk about how to get great at seller lead generation. If you're here to learn more about taking more listings, you're in the right place. Nick, what's up, brother? Welcome to the show. How's it going? I'm proud to be on, finally. Yeah, man, absolutely. This has been a long time in, in the making for sure, dude. Uh, I'm, I'm super excited to get you on because um, I think that this the timing for this particular show is uh, is really, 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 really good. No pun intended, because we we all need more listings, right? Um, it seems like the minute we get listings, you know, they sell right away. And so I think people will take a lot of value from hearing what you and your group over there are doing to uh, to take more listings. So um, before we get started, why don't we jump right into kind of uh, your story? We were talking a little bit before the show about um, your time at KW and I'm a KW guy too, was there for, for three years. And you talked about how you were going through the motions, but Talk about how you got into real estate and, and, and then your journey up until today. Absolutely. I mean, this it's a fun story, but fun to me, right? Um, so I got in the business in, uh, let's see, 2006. So uh, license, li or 2005, got licensed 2006. And then, and during that time, the reason I got into it is as I was in college, I was delivering pizzas and I always joke, that's the best job I ever had, right? It's, it's you know, straightforward. I, I know what to do. I was the most efficient at it and I could, I could, you know, get off at the end of the night and then I was done. Like I didn't have to yeah. think about it. It was just a mindless job. And so there was a posting for a real estate assistance uh, opening in Richardson, Texas with this independent firm that was the number one brokerage there um, at that time. And so my brother, who's my business partner today, we've always had a uh, desire to get into real estate investing. Right. So, so when, when we were, I'm older, you know, I'm two years older than he is. And, and when we were in our teens, we read Rich Dad, Poor Dad and yeah. it was attempting to try to do some subject twos. And, and, you know, we just always had that, that, that mindset of that we were, you know, to be a millionaire, you really had to get into the real estate business, right? You had sure. to, you had to own real estate. And so what we were doing was, you know, you know, when I saw that opening, I took it. I jumped at it. I said, all right, it was a $10 an hour, 20 hours a week. I said, screw it. I want to, I want to take it. I want to learn it. And I had no intention to become a real estate agent. That was never on my radar. Yeah. Um, and so during that time, I joke around, I was the worst real estate assistant ever. I, I, I questioned why they kept me around and didn't fire me. Um, but during that time, they got me licensed. Um, they, they, they said, hey, be my showing assistant before the showing assistant term was around. Yeah. And, and I started helping them. I saw how they ran it. They were very much relational. And then they also started taking over uh, a neighborhood. So that one time, I, I'm going to skew the numbers. They probably had 25, 30% market share in this one neighborhood. And so I really learned how to run the business the right way. And, and I graduated college. They offered me a full-time salary position. I turned it down and I said, can I make a hundred thousand dollars my first year in the business? Right. Mm -hmm. Let me go hundred percent in, in, into this. And they said, absolutely. You can do that. You know, no questions asked. And so I, I turned down that salary position, went full-time with them, hundred percent commission and uh, did not make a hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> Sold three houses my first year. in Nice. Yep. So I am not one of those stories where I was rookie of the year. Um, I, I fumbled my way around, right? And so 2008, um, luckily I didn't go out of business in 2007, 2008, I started to get some momentum, recessions hitting, but I had eight deals under contract in one month and I was I was Superman. Yeah. I was like, bullets were bouncing off me. I was, I was like $90,000 that I was gonna cash out that month. Yeah. And uh, they all fell apart, all eight, <laughs> they died, right? And so, and, and they don't like, not in today's time when, when someone terminates and you know it's gonna come back to life, yeah. all eight of those, did not come back. Hopefully you didn't spend that money. <laughs> I, I, I was, again, I, I was spending a little bit. I was still that that new agent and, yeah. and started to spend some of it. I, I Luckily I'm, I'm pretty cheap in my, my ways anyway. Yeah. So, so what I started to do is I was questioning myself, did I have what it would takes to stay in this industry? Yeah. And so what I did is I started interviewing for jobs and 
Um, I got a, I got a job offer, went on an interview, got a job offer at an asset management foreclosure company at the time. And they had said, they had said, Hey, you need to work Monday through Saturday. Cause we've got a whole bunch of properties that we need to dispose of. And if you want to hit bonus, you need to work Sundays and, and you got to really squeeze out an extra day, find a way to work eight days a week. Yeah. And I was going to take it. It was $65,000. I needed the money. Um, and, but I was like, all right, if, if I turn, if, if, if I put this amount of time that they're requiring me to, to work, if I did that in my real estate business, I learned how to lead, generate and prospect, then I'll make more than $65,000. Mm -hmm. So I turned it down, didn't know what the heck I was going to do. Um, but, but I started YouTube and everything and, and learning how to generate leads through Craigslist. I bought a, I bought a, uh, uh, a, a program off of eBay at the time and, and I couldn't afford it. So I, I ripped it off and resold it in order to get my money back. And it was a Craigslist lead generator style. And so I started to learn how to talk to people who didn't know me yeah. to, to start gathering their trust. And so that was kind of our, our, my, my step into that prospecting side uh, of things. And it was mainly buyers, right? You know, I yeah. think, I think a lot of us start out that way. It was mainly buyers and, and, um, I joined in December of 2007, I joined Keller Williams. Mm -hmm. I'd read the, the MREA book and, you know, we talk about leads, listings, leverage. Yep. And so I still was struggling with figuring out how to get into that listing game. And at that time, you know, many of us know him, you know, Michael Reese is in my, was in my marketplace in Frisco, Texas. And so I was kind of watching what they were doing, what Jay Kenner and Michael Reese were doing. And so I started, you know, started, you know, kind of following them. And 2009 is really when we jumped into the expired game. Mm -hmm. And from then sent, from then on since, learning the prospecting side of the business. Yeah. And we've, we've been heavy listings ever since 2009. Okay. I, I, there's a lot really to unpack there because like to go from where you were uh, to where you are now, you know, a lot has to happen in between there. And, and there's a lot of, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of income, a lot of, a lot of business income that's reinvested back into business to create more optimization, to create, you know, more leverage and more leads. But one thing that I don't want to let pass is you talked about, you talked about, you had a decision to make, right? And you, you could have gone, you know, there was a fork in the road for you and, and you chose, you chose the path, I think of more resistance, but it had a higher ceiling. And, and so I'm curious, like if, if you go back to that moment, Nick, like how did you make that decision? Because, and before you answer that, I feel like, you know, most people would not make that decision. And, and, and one thing I know is like I came to that fork in the road, too. And I, too, went through that journey where I was just I was literally I spent day and night trying to find as much information as I could about uh, about, you know, seller lead generation, because I, my business was predicated right out of the gate on expired. So I was just watching every video on expires, but not everybody does that. And so I'm curious, like, talk to me about like what you went through to make that decision. And then, and then like, how did you feel at that time? Uh, I mean, I'll tell you, I was feeling torn. I didn't know what to do. I was newly married. I just bought it. Like I just bought a house and uh, my, my now ex-wife, you know, when I was newly married, she's not, she's my ex-wife today, but at that time, you know, she was paying for everything I, from 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 being from just being a, a man in general that that puts it in a different perspective. So I was torn. I had a lot of emotions going on at that. But I'll have to go back to I don't typically always take the easiest path. Yeah. Um, um, I dropped out of high school. I got a GED and and I come from a family. My mom has a doctorate in education. She's the superintendent of a charter of charter schools. Yeah. Right. My grandfather was the CEO of, of several banks. Uh, my dad is an engineer type, you know, and so, you know, dropping out of school, I presented a plan and got it, you know, said, hey, I, you know, I got hurt playing football. That was that was my that, my lifeline. And and that was my those were my friends. And after I got hurt, they still kept going and I was left behind. And so I, I was kind of that struggling path in high school. So I said, screw it. I'm going to just I'm 17 years old. Let me drop out. Let me get my GD. Let me go to college. And so I presented a plan and I executed on it. And it was the same thing. In 2008, when I was looking at it, if I really break it down, I had a fear of failure. I had told everyone that I'm in the real estate business. And, and you know, uh, in 2008, I was 25 years old. You know, my friends weren't buying for me because they were still broke or in college and, and still kind of figuring their way. My, my, my friend's parents weren't buying from me because I was their friend's kid. So 
but I told him I was going to make it. So there was that fear of failure and being like, yep, I knew he wouldn't make it. Screw it. I'm going to prove you wrong. And so, so I just knew that if, if I truly went down, if I truly studied this craft that I could figure it out. Yeah. It's not hard. This is not rocket scientists. You know, you know, you know, we're not having to, we're not having to come up with, with huge mathematical equations or anything like that, or, or, or cure cancer. We're, we're here, we're, we're in the people business. And so if, if I can figure out how to get in front of the, in front of people and, and show my confidence level, then I knew I was going to win. Yeah. And so yeah. that's, that was really the, the torn part is when you're, when you, when you don't have any money, you're forced to make temporary decisions that you don't normally want to make. Yeah. And it's, and it's kind of bypassing that thought process and saying, am I only doing this for a temporary fix, like a little quick plug, or is it going to, in five years, am I going to look back and say that was the best decision or the worst decision I made? Yeah, dude, that's awesome, man. Because like, you know, I feel like you, you don't know, I don't know how or why you come to that place, but you know, I was talking to one of my agents in here earlier who is going through a, a little bit of a rough time right now. And, um, you know, the, 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 the hard thing about going through rough times is that in the moment it, it is, it is, it's something that can build on itself each day because you decide not to take action and in not taking action, you actually, it's a compounding effect that makes you get even worse and worse and worse and worse. And so he, he scheduled a one-on-one -on -one with me today and he came in and we talked for probably 45 minutes and I'm like, use this, you, like you made the, like you're in a bad place right now, but you made the decision to come out to the office and sit down with me to talk about, you know, developing a plan for you for 2020. And I said, use that, that decision, because that was a good decision and you're here and you follow through, use that to create momentum to show up tomorrow at 9 a.m. and make phone calls all day and, and, and start creating events in your life that you can feel good about and start building on those instead of building on all of the misfortune that you have right now. And it really is that simple. It's yeah. like, it's just about making the right decisions. Absolutely. I agree hundred percent. And, and, you know, there's, we used to have in my old office, we don't have it up in here in our new, in our new space, but there's, you know, my, my team likes to, to poke jokes at me and put, put my picture everywhere on the walls. And we had this one, this one meme going around and, and the saying is look, prospecting solves everything. Yeah. And so, you know, one reason why we are prospecting based is I also saw that during the recession, I saw agents that I looked up to and, and respect, and I still do, but they were losing their house. They were behind on their car payments and, yeah. and they had gotten so comfortable with just being a referral based agent that they, they didn't know what to do when, when the economy shifted. And I said, I never want to be in that position. So no. I went, you know, you know, as crude as the sound, I was like a one night stand in the beginning. Um, <laughs> so uh, it, it was, it was more, more along the lines of, of, you know, just chasing after clients, not really caring about the service side of things. Yeah. And, and, you know, going after the next one. So that was, that was the, the main focus. And, and I got so obsessed with the prospecting side of it. Yeah, dude, that's a great point. And I, I remember like we have some, some um, era, eerily similar, eerily similar yeah, moments in our business in that I, I remember at one point, and I think it was in like 2000, early 2015, I had like 88 listings and I didn't even have an admin. <laughs> and, and I remember people just calling me all the time and my service was horrible, dude. Like my service was absolutely horrible. And I just remember thinking to myself, is like, is this what this I really still going live? Just drop a drop an L in the comments down below. Let me know. So I I'll keep going without him. Um, so if can this you, is still going live, can um, you hear me, Nick? So so really from there, it was learning from 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 honing our prospecting based business. It was more about, you know, who could I learn from? So Michael Reese was an amazing mentor of mine. Um, and I learned all about expired listings. So we really jumped in to expireds from 2009 out. In fact, it's still one of our, our top three listing sources. Not as, not as high up as it's not number one anymore. Number one is, is a sphere and past clients, but it's, it, it bounces back between number two and number three. So it was from, from on the expired based business, it was learning how 
to really take a beating and getting our teeth kicked in day and out, day in and day out to Are you here? You there? Yeah, I'm here, man. Okay. Did, I, did I drop off for a second? You dropped off for a while, so I didn't I didn't know what happened there. I kept going for a little bit. Yeah, no worries, man. So what I was saying is, uh, and I, I appreciate you filling in there for a minute, but um, what I was saying is that you, like, so you, you got to this point in your business to where you, like, you decided, okay, um, I'm all in. I'm starting out with buyers like most of us do, right? And then you, you, you got to hold a recent tender somehow, either through um, uh, seeing their digital advertisements on social media or getting some of their emails or whatever. And then when did you have that mindset shift that, you know what, i got to focus on on sellers. I can't cut my teeth on buyers. It's just not an effective way to do business. So it was really that 2000, 2009, you know, end of 2008, 2009, right? So, so from that, it was... Um, again, I, you know, I got into, you know, Jay Kenner, Michael Reese started Kenner Reese, I think around that time frame is probably 08, 09 yeah. when they were really starting to get big on it. So, so I took their coaching on it, but, and I took my first ex expired listing in 2009. So, so from there it was, how could I leverage my time out? It was all from that is like, you know, I wanted to work more clients. I, I had a desire to build a big business. I didn't know what it looked like. I didn't know how the team aspect was looking. I had a desire to, to one, it, from an ego standpoint, you know, make sure that I was, I was one of the top, you know, if I'm not number one, I better, I better be fighting for that and jockeying for that position. Yeah. And, and I definitely had a, a huge desire to make a, a ton of money. My big why when I was really younger was I wanted private jet money. And that was really yeah. what was really driving my force at that time. I wow. didn't have any kids or anything else. So, that was the focus. And I knew that I could work with more clients from the listing side than the buying side. It was, yeah. it was, it's just a, you know, you know, it's just, it comes down to, all right, I could work with 15, 20, 30, 50 sellers at any given time. Yeah. And I can only work with five buyers. All right. Which one makes more sense? All right. Exactly. I'm, gonna go with it. I'm gonna go with the sellers. And so when you started out, you said you took your first expired listing in 2009 and you scaled from there. So that was just you, right? You were just by yourself. You were calling expired listings for sell by owners. And what, where did your business go from that point in 2009 with just you on the phone to where it is today? Kind of walk us through that. Absolutely. So 2009 is, is I was an individual agent until probably the middle half of 2009 is then that that's when the good home team was born with my brother, who's my business partner. So, yeah. so he, I do have the benefit that he came from the oil and gas industry, you know, boiler room style um, where, you know, they were calling high net worth accredited investors and he, you know, he came in and we kind of replicated that model, right? It was, you know, of course you can't be so in your face when you're calling, when you're calling homeowners, versus high net worth investors and, and how they talk. You know, if you've ever seen a boiler room style movie, yeah. um, you know, it, it's, it's, we're similar in terms of pounding the phone. So yes, in the beginning it was just me. Um, and then in 2010, we started to, we started to out, we started to not just outsource it, you know, on top of my calling, we brought in another guy from the oil and gas side part-time. So on weekends, I hired a, an expired caller to to help me set appointments and so we started scaling from there we got at one point you know this was in 2016 i believe we had as many as eight callers you know that were that was circle prospecting around neighborhoods and and looking for nurtures right so our yeah. team our team from 2009 went from myself and my brother to today we're selling you know over 200 houses a year um with a with a team of uh we now have 11 agents and growing yeah um and and we are we are still prospecting base uh, you know i was saying when you dropped off there and if it, it was still going live that you know um sphere and past clients are our are, are number one source of business now yeah but but in the beginning we were again we were like, just like a one night stand we were only we were after the chase we did not focus on the service side um and and it was really about all right close that one go to the next one close that one go to the next one you yeah. said yes thank you all right you know and and hopefully you stuck around long enough that i could sell your house um and and 
and I'm okay with I'm okay with that learning style because that's my learning style in the beginning, sure. right? Um, it's not everybody's, um, but that that's what had to happen for us in the beginning in order to learn the prospect inside. Is you know it's you know this is I say it's like fighting Mike Tyson every day and yeah. I'm getting better and better. I'm still going to get knocked out, but I'm going to get back up. I'm going to ask for another punch, and then maybe I'm going to last a couple more rounds, and then eventually we can we're going to start sparring back and forth, and maybe I start winning. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, now today we focus on, on our service side of, you know, the service side is the number one important thing is making sure our clients are, are five-star happy and, and they want to refer us, but we still pound those phones harder and better than anyone else around. Yeah. So we're going to have, I mean, we'll have rookie agents that'll watch and listen to this and we'll have experienced agents, team agents watch this. So let's try to speak to them all and we'll start out with kind of the guy or gal who's just getting in the business or been in the business for maybe a year or two, who's really looking to add that seller region generation component to their business. Um, what that guy or gal who's just starting out one or two years in the business, like what do you recommend? What should their what should their daily routine look like? Um, and what tools should they use or do you recommend they use if they don't have a lot of money? Absolutely. So I would definitely and, and first off, they need to be following a daily consistent schedule. So Again, the, the number one thing is, is regardless if you're going to be a prospecting based agent or, or go after referrals in the beginning, you need to be you need to treat this not as a job. This is a career and 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 that everything's on the line. So um, if you don't have appointments, you need to be legion. And, and whether that's for us, that's all on the phones, that's sending text messages, that's sending emails. Um, and so if we're if we're going to go the prospecting way like our team is. The, the biggest opportunity that we're seeing right now is for sell by owners, right? We're starting to, the, the market is starting to, to soften a little bit. Yeah. And we're starting to see that the for sale by owners are not having the success they were having, you know, selling it on their own when the inventory levels were so low that, you know, if you fogged a mirror, the house was gone. Sure. And now that is the biggest source, um, you know, that we're starting to see. So, so for sale by owners, I would hit up, they're on Zillow. It's yeah. free. They're putting they're putting their all their information on there. And so I would go in personally. I, I'm not one. I've never used the script that I have a buyer um, because I'm not no. I don't like to lead people on. I'm, I'm going to call you straight up. Um, me personally, like if you listen to my podcast, we just did a we just did a talk on this. I think uh, two episodes ago, uh, I run a show called The Only Real Estate Podcast Worth Listening to. And and we talked about how the differences between myself and the, my other co-hosts. Um, and I won't go run. I won't go even look at the house, right? Because I value I value my time. I I can I'm going to be upfront and transparent with those for sale owners what my intentions are. Yeah. And so I'm going to build rapport that way and send items of value and anything I can help them with. Yeah. Right. So I'm going to call them. I'm going to I'm and I'm going to be the one that outlasts you when it comes to follow up. I'm going to be the one that outlasts you in sending text messages. Yeah. I'm going to be the one that I'm going to do everything I can to help you um, sell your house on your own. In fact, I tell them I don't want you to hire me. But if but if and when that time comes, I want to be that agent because I know hands down I'm the best person to go with to get your home sold for the best price possible. And the goal is in the shortest amount of time. And yeah. here's our track record. I love it. So your approach is very much like ours in that we will not call and tell them we have a buyer. Um, we are more from a an approach of just really you know, how can we help you? How can we service you? Do you have disclosures? Um, you know, perhaps we, we've we done things like holding your house in a store for LA on it, which is really technique, by the way. It's a, it's a great way to get your foot in the door if you're willing to go out. And it's also a great way for you to be able to pick up buyers uh, for, for, you know, maybe some of your own things. Like if you have comparable listings for the first time other, I promise you this. There's no other agent calling them asking to hold their house open. And especially if the uh, person is new, they're kind of taking a hack when you do that. But I do love your software approach in that if you call if you're not in, if, 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 if your initial conversation is telling you to have a buyer and you don't, I mean, that's, that's not a good way to start off in the relationship. Would you agree? I, absolutely. In fact, I, I still hear that people are doing that. Right. Or, you know, because, you know, and, and so what we do, look, we're going to I'm going to tell you up front, I'm, I'm going to create doubt in you. Right. Like if you're if I'm calling you as a for sale by owner, I'm going to sit here and tell you, you probably have gotten calls 
from agents. You're probably getting pounded by agents right now. You, I know you don't want to talk to me and, and that you're probably hearing that they have a buyer. Well, I'm calling you and tell you, I don't have a buyer right now. I probably won't be because, well, if I go fishing and I throw a hook in the water, I have to have bait on it. Your house is the bait, yeah. right? I, you know, I can't just throw an empty hook in there. I'm not going to catch a fish. And so these people that are having buyers, tell them to produce that buyer. Like I, I'm going to create doubt and I'm going to do whatever I can to win um, from that standpoint. So absolutely. The, the, I agree a hundred percent. There, there are better and more efficient ways. Um, and, and the, unfortunately those are still techniques that are being taught and those are techniques being taught by trainers and, and coaches and, and unfortunately brokerages that, that never really excelled in the listing game at a high level. Yeah. I know a lot of people are hearing this and really liking what you have to say because a lot of people are under the impression that you have to you have to do that. And you're here to say, and I'm here to say that there really is another way. And it, it's really it, it's coming with with um, with complete candor, being honest, being upfront, and, and people will appreciate that because you know as well as I do that the initial conversation with a with somebody is much different than the initial conversation with an expired because when something goes when something goes on the market and it's a for sale by owner, you know, they still have the retail, right? Because their their mindset going in, if you understand that, I can tell this in my own the commission, right? That's exactly what they're thinking. And so the first week, two weeks, three weeks, even the first month, they still have the retail. But what happens is as time goes on and they don't have a buyer and people trade through their home, they don't make offers, um, they call it hours at night, uh, real call, you know, uh, every day, every week, promising that they have a buyer, they get beat up, man. And so your approach is, hey, I'm just always there, right? I'm calling, I'm just checking in, how's everything going? I wanted to make sure all you got a residential property disclosure, if not, you know, you want to, right? It's checking in week after week after week and being consistent and being top of mind. And that's how you're looking to sell by owning, correct? A hundred percent. I mean, I mean, it's, it's, it's staying top of mind with it and, and, you know, you know, just being around, look, it's, yes, you're right. It's frustrating. What I will say is we use social media at a high level as well. So if you go, if you go follow me, I mean, we're doing this Facebook live as well. If you're following me at anything we do or on Instagram, go look at what, what I do. Look at what, what my agents, you know, Elizabeth Austin, Arthur Simons, David Bentnick, and the rest of them do. We're big on, on showing our successes as well. And we're also, a lot of our video is going to be more about educational side of things so that when you come in, if, if you're going to do any research on us, you're going to find out that we are, you know, we put our money where our mouth is, you know, and, and so it's, it's more, you know, we live, eat and breathe real estate. And so, you know, it, and it's, and it's not just having commission breath, right? The, the problem is we, we, we treat these four cell boners as, as just a, a quick paycheck. And you got to remember these people, they're, look, they're people behind this, right? Yeah. We're talking to people and we've, for whatever reason, when, when we start making calls, we forget that. And, and, you know, we still have to deal when, when, when you're making expired calls, when you're, when you're making circle prospecting calls and someone, especially on expired, when someone beats you up and they just berate you, you don't like, we, why take it personally? You don't know what kind of day they're having. Yeah. Like they could, I mean, they could have woken up and their dog ran away and got run over. Right. Yeah. You know, like, and, and who cares? Like, you know, I was, I was talking to a, a to a new agent recruit today and saying, look, I've talked to people that, that, that have told me that I'm scum and I should kill myself. I should go back and kill my whole family. And then we go talk to them again. All of a sudden they're bit, like they like us. Yeah. Right. Like it, it is what it is. And so these are real people. They have emotions and we just need to figure out how to best help them. We're problem solvers. Yeah. Let me solve your problem. You're a for sale by owner. I know you don't want to pay our commission. I know. I know you don't. But I'm going to help you. And if yeah. I can show you, there's reports out there that show as a for sale by owner that that if you hire me versus going for sale by owner, it's a, almost a net zero gain. Like yeah. so, it, it's basically going to cost you the same. Without your trust, headache. yep, yeah. Without the headache, put your trust in me that my systems. I'm I'm going to follow through with what I say. Just put your put your trust in it. And guess what? If you don't, if I don't do what I say, I have an easy clause in there that says you can fire me at any time. 
you know, no fees, no cancellation or anything like that. You don't have to worry about that. It's, you know, no questions asked, just a 48 hour written notice. It's a, yeah. it's a risk free guarantee. And so we give those people those outs and I say, Love fire it. me. If I, if I don't do what I say, I'm going to do get rid of me. Yeah. Love it. Love it. Love it, man. And I've had the privilege of meeting your group and uh, you're a smart dude. Um, this was the first time that I've gone to an EXP event and actually brought my, some of my team members out. And it is the best decision I ever made. Um, it is, it is such, it is so much more of an enjoyable experience when you bring your team members out and you can let them experience that. And it so galvanizes the group. When I saw you there and I got to talk to you for the first time and meet your group, man. I think you guys were you guys were the best of the best. I, I appreciate that. And this and this is the first time I know, like, you know, I don't know how deep of conversation we get into that since we're talking about listings, but but I mean, we were we were with Keller Williams since 2007. That's really other than the independent brokerage I'd started out for as an employee, like that was my only, my only home that I knew and, and making that change, you know, we're excited again. I mean, yeah. you know, the term making real estate fun again, it was true. Like, like there's an excitement level that I can't explain. There's something with this group that I can't explain, yeah. but, but it's, it makes me where I want to share this with everyone when, when before, you know, we would just go through the motions and go through the routine. Like, you know, we still have, we're still competitive. We're going to make sure we're taking our business, but, but, you know, growth was stagnant. We're, we're, you know, our growth isn't stagnant now, you know, we're 90 days into to EXP and, and, and uh, the, the change was good. Right. I mean, yeah. you know, the, the amount of caring and the openness and transparency that, that our group and, and the agents have, like, I'll, I'll give you a, a prime example. We didn't, this was our first EXP event that we went to. Um, I had more of my team members there than any of the Keller Williams events that that I'd ever gone to, and and Beth Ann Jones took us under her wing and and made sure to introduce us to everyone. And from that. from then from there on, like you know, you got Nikki Gregory, you've got you know you you know you know have got Mike J and Albie and Nick Cram and all those guys, and and so you know you guys opened up. I mean, we were you know in my opinion, we were the new guys in that group. Y'all been around for a little bit while longer than us. Yeah, and and. You know, you let us in and, and and treated us like we've 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 been there for years. And so yeah. that is a feeling like no other. And we definitely appreciate it. And we've been trying to figure out how to put this in words so we can share this with other people. Right. Because yeah. because it doesn't make any sense when you just talk about it. And and because that's not what you experience anywhere else. Yeah, I love it. I love it. I love it, man. So we talked about the sell by owners. Let's switch gears a little bit and talk about uh, what you guys are doing uh, with expires and, and and talking like like we're talking to the people who are maybe um, just getting into the business and then we can complicate the conversation some more as we talk about some of the stuff you guys are doing today. So I mean, it, whether you're new in this game or you're a veteran, our our, our approach has not changed and and. Mm -hmm. It scares me a little bit just because of how the how the industry and just how technology is changing. But we're still it's still all about the phone calls. If we make over 400 calls a day to expires, we're going to we're going to set, you know, three, four five appointments from it. We're going to have our, our follow ups in there so that it's still working for us. Um, we are we are looking to get more more strategic in, in how we attack, especially with text messages. I have a. I've got some good friends that, again, that are on our, our podcast, the only real estate podcast we're listening to. And mm -hmm. they're running they're running decently high level at not making the phone calls, but but sending text messages and building it through text. And so, um, you know, right now we're we're just all about the call still. We, okay. we keep we keep it straightforward and simple. I don't want to complicate it. Um, and and it's uncovering motivation. Right. Again, you, you call them. They more than likely. We're not the first ones that have called them. They're, they're frustrated and we've got to pull that guard down. If they hang up on us, we call them back. Um, and, and really it's, it's about asking enough questions to uncover, to uncover true motivation. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and what I will say with that is you definitely need to learn your scripts. Um, jo you know, I, I studied a lot from Jordan Belfort, you know, Wolf of Wall Street guy, mm -hmm. and he's got this straight line persuasion. Right. And so, on the straight line persuasion, if you just think about it, it's it's straightforward and simple. You make your phone call is point A, point B is an appointment. Um, and I call also point B as well, like a nurture follow up. 
Yeah. Um, and, and the easiest way to get there is in a straight line. Well, when you're making phone calls and talking to people, people will try to throw you off off of your path. And, and so your goal is to try to make sure to keep it within that that straight line as possible so that you can get to that end point of, of you know, hey, Mike, it sounds like we need to meet. I have Saturday at 10 available or Saturday at three. Which one works best for you? Um, it just takes 30 minutes, no obligation, no pressure. If you like everything you hear, which I'm sure that you'll be blown away with our proven techniques and systems to get your home sold for up to 18% more than the average real estate agent, uh, would there be any reason why you wouldn't do business with us when I come out there Saturday at three? Um, and so, so with that, it's, it's focusing on making sure that, you know, from the call to the finish, your job is to set an appointment or a nurture follow-up. That's it. And, and then, then getting so comfortable in your questions to understand where you want, where you need to take it in, in order to get to the, to that end result. Yeah. Right. And that just takes time. You're not going to be, look, you're not going to be good. I don't make as many calls as I used to. Um, so when I jump back on, I'm rusty. I'm rusty as all get out. Like I'll get on there and be like, why did I just say that? <laughs> I, I sounded stupid. But what I've realized and and when you start doing this, you got to have fun with it. I'll tell you, like we make jokes and 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 we've got one David Bentnick who just walked in my office right now. This is a running joke that we have. And you got to test it out because this shows you that people don't listen to the words. They hear the tonality. They hear the excitement energy. Yeah. So I'll just be like, hey, Mike, are you feeling what I'm putting in you? <laughs> every time they will say yes. And that's just like, that's a little NLP ish, yeah. but we just kind of manipulated that. And we do that to break up the monotony in our calls. Yeah. But Hey, are you feeling what I'm putting in you? Right. And they will say yes every time. And I'm, and, and the reason I bring this up is that you've got to also make it fun because if you're looking at it, dreading making these calls, like, Oh man, about to get the shit bit at, beat out of me today. Yeah. No, then, then you've already come from a negative mindset. You're not going to set any appointments. You might as well just go home and maybe go apply for some jobs. Yeah. Right. It, it just, it, it just doesn't like you got to come from excitement, energy, and know that you are going to help those people get to their end destination. And so, right. you know, we started the call. Hey, Mike, it's Nick Good with the Good Home Team EXP Realty. I, I'm calling. Us, I'm sure you know your home's no longer listed for sale. It expired. Have you given up on selling that house? Yeah. Right. Well, doesn't matter whether they say yes or no. I'm like, oh, man, man, uh, where were you going to go? Right. Typical expired script. Where were you going to go? Let's find the motivation. Where were you going? That's right? never put the difference, right? That, that, that's, the, that's the email that you send to the CEO. Right? Hey, are you giving up on this project? That's Chris Long, man. Is it? I yeah. just, I, I haven't, I have started reading that, but, or listening to it. I didn't finish it, but I don't, I, I just got it from, from, People don't like to give up. I don't like to give up. So I actually just incorporated that. So um, I'll give credit to that, except that, you know, that was a little bit of ours of, of tweaking. Yeah. And saying, hey, you know, your home's no longer for sale. If, if we could bring you a buyer and, and got you the price or whatever, whatever the old scripts we used to use, it said, it's, it, you know, when in Keller Williams, when Bold was going around, you know, you knew when Bold was going around because everyone was making the same darn calls. And so yeah. we needed to make sure we stood out. And so we, we just tested that and we tweak it. And then again, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what they say. What matters is can I continue asking enough conversation or, or enough questions to uncover their true motivation? Yeah. And from there, I can determine should we meet right now or can I put you in my system and follow up with you? The game is either an appointment or the nurtures because yeah. if I get you in my system, I can also win you over through our, our marketing programs as well. Yeah, that's cool. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you wrote that down. Man. Uh, so for somebody who expired, uh, and one thing you said before that also is that a good part of your business today is influence uh, grants. And by the way, uh, you've earned the right to do that. That didn't just happen organically, like you had to earn it. And you did that by starting up calling sell by and expired. And those people became listings and then they became past clients that you marketed to. And now I'll turn and selling the house as well. Is that correct? Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Okay. So for selling the house, it's a platform where you guys utilize the Nick right now for your data. So what platform are we using for that? Yeah. So we're using uh, Vulcan 7. Um, Vulcan 7 has been, I mean, heck, we've been using that for years. Um, it, it used to be an exclusive program. I fought and clawed my way into it. I think it's open to everybody now. Yeah. Um, and I would also go to, I think, you know, uh, Red X is an another amazing product, right? Yeah. So they've gotten a lot better with their data. 
and 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 being able to capture cell phones. Um, and you know, we also used Cole Cole Realty Resource for our for Circle Prospect. And I will say that that up until this year, the Circle Prospecting Legion game had been a, had been one of uh, another top four listing source for us. Yeah. So um, and Tell that is, what that is real quick for those who don't understand what Circle Prospecting. Absolutely. So circle prospecting is we're calling around neighborhoods. So think about it like like uh, like you're farming, except that we're just doing it through blanket calls. Mm -hmm. And and we're either doing a just listed or just sold call um, and saying, hey, Mike, it's Nick Good with the Good Home Team EXP Realty. I was just calling you to let you know we you know, a home just sold around the corner from you in your neighborhood. And and as I'm sure you're aware that only one buyer can win out on that house. And and unfortunately, there was there was uh, several other buyers that that had missed out on that opportunity. So we promised we promised to 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 find another home in the neighborhood. Do you happen to know anybody who's thinking about selling? Yeah. No, no. Okay, great. What about yourself? Have you thought about maybe selling in the next twelve months or less? Right. And so so we go from there. If they say if they say no, we still try to finish it with great. I appreciate your time, Mike. You know, one last thing. You know, a lot of people really really love. The fact that um, you know we've got a great uh, market update system. It's it's a monthly market update, you know, and, and they kind of love seeing what's going on in their neighborhood. Would you be interested in, in getting our our, our uh, monthly market updates? I just yep. need your email address, and so I'm gonna we're gonna try to get their email. So you know, and, and do that. So when we were running, we've slowed down on circle prospecting. Yeah. Um, but when we were running our call center, I had as as many as eight or nine callers at any given time. Um, we, to this day, 2019, we are still selling probably eight to 12 houses a year from that, that lead source that was two to three years old, right? We're tapping that vein still and still getting listings out of it because they're, they're starting to mature, right? Cause not everyone's actually going to sell in the next 12 or 24 months. So we're just getting their contact information and cell phone. And so we're then dripping on them and, and doing check-in calls and everything else. And guess what? Then we outlast everybody. Right. Yeah. And so we're going to, we're going to, that is another source lead source of business that really helps us take that 12 to 15 listings that we typically average every month. Dude. That is so yeah. it's funny. It's like we're, it's not like you create this. It, it's like, this is what all the teams do and they do it at a level. And uh, it, it, it's already like they talked about it. It's not research. It, it's not research development. Rip off the people. <laughs> Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's, I mean, we, you know, I look at it, I look at it from, look, we overcomplicate this game and we just try to simplify everything. And, and it's a fun, you know, it, it's a fun time. And look, you know, my thing is times are changing. So we've also got to figure out what is the new prospecting game. Yeah. Right. Um, so I'm, I'm doubling down on video content creation. We've got, you know, in our group, we're, we're blessed to have Nick Krim. Um, and, and our group here, right? So, um, you know, he's an amazing content, you know, content social media guy. So we're looking, I, I'm looking into the future of what what will prospecting look like? How are we going to hit those expires and and for sale bonders? Like, you know, we're trying to make it, can we be that local celebrity that that Michael Reese calls that digital president? Yeah. How can we be that go-to source here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area? So, you know, look, it's it's a good time. It's, it's you know, times are good and, and the benefit of, of learning this prospecting based game is that it'll make you recession proof, yeah. right? That is, if, if you can take anything away from it, even if you hate it, it's still a mindset thing. But even if you know deep down, like, man, this, this, this really sucks, but I know, I know it's a necessary, a necessary end um, to get to where, where I want to go. It will make you recession proof because guess what, when that recession or blip and downturn comes and it's coming, you know, you know, it's just like the weather, man. Eventually, they're gonna. Eventually, we're gonna be right. The downturn is coming, and so we're going to experience, you know, you know, distressed sellers at a higher level again. Yeah. And so, how are you gonna get in front of those people? How are you gonna make sure you're not the one that is now a distressed seller yourself in your business, and you're having to fire sell everything and and take a second job and or get out of the business that you really don't want to, and you have to go find an a, a, a eight to five job. Yeah. Dude, I love it. I love it. Man. So, so about there's expired circle prospecting. Is there anything we haven't talked about? I mean, there's so much we haven't talked about, but yeah. we can. I mean, from a Legion game, this is here's the thing that it, it's not a 
that this is it's not a sexy game, right? Yeah. Like from the Legion perspective, we could talk about internet leads. We can talk about, um, you know, from our community events. Like we we cold prospect commu- at our community events that is still sphere related, and we just invite everyone. We're we're having our annual pumpkin patch event here on October twenty sixth. And uh, we've got, what, Alex, 600 plus people, I think, RSVP'd already for our, our community event, Pumpkin Patch event. Um, and that is another way. And we invite everybody. I don't care if they're a real estate agent. I don't care if they've never done business with us. Yeah. I don't care if they just bought a house right now. We want them to show up. We want them in our system. We want them to know who we are so that we become that trusted name in the community and the area and that, you know, Our last one we did was the back to school movie event. And we had a lady who met with an agent the week before. And because of our movie event, she loved it. She brought her grandchildren out. She's hiring us. Right. Right. And so that that's a that is, you know, fifteen thousand dollars worth, you know, in commissions right there. Yeah. Like so there's so many different directions we could take it in. But from the listing side of things, if you want to last in this game, in my opinion, it's got to be listings. And you got to figure out how to do it at a You know, if you're an individual you, you, you need to be running, you need to be figuring out how to take five plus listings every one month. If you're on a team, if you're, if you're running a team, in my opinion, and, and we're still, look, we're still, we got room to grow. We still got a lot of learning curve on this. And in my opinion, we really should be at 30 plus listings taken every month. Yeah. Um, and, and we're, we're right around that one, that 15 mark right now. So, so you need that. If you're running a team, you need that double digit that double digit listings taken because then you have the sign call opportunities. You have the, the circle prospecting opportunities. You have the open house opportunities, sure. those cheaper lead sources to be able to feed your team and, and help them grow. So you can actually stay profitable in this business and, and, you know, not just, not just run it from an ego standpoint and saying, you know, I sell X amount of homes, but I can't, I can't pay myself because we're actually, we're actually in the hole every month. Yeah. What, so when you bring a new agent in, whether they're new licensed or just new to, team do you do you allow them to live absolutely i want i want them to learn it from the very beginning we run we run a hybrid model um uh, where they can take sellers and buyers that's that's something that we allowed four years ago we started that four years ago um and and we did that one in order to retain our talent because we were losing good people because we didn't allow it before we were in a specialized model yeah and um we, we now allow that. And what we do is our training. Uh, I like to, I always call it, if we were for, refer it to like a sports team, I'm a player's coach. Mm-hmm. So uh, I'm, I'm not as a hardcore on your face when it comes to the training and everything else. Like we will run listing appointments with you. We will shadow you. Um, you know, when it comes to our, our training style, we're going to throw you in the fire. We're going to let you, you need to learn it as you go. Right. Um, because, because if you're just sitting in a classroom or going through scripting and going through the routine, you're not going to absorb it. Um, so yeah, absolutely. From day one, if they set a listing appointment day one, now they're going to have to have one of our agents, sh- you know, run it and they shadow it, but they're able to run listing appointments from the get go. Yeah. So when you bring your folks in, um, how do you gear them up in order to work with sell? Like, do you guys, do you guys kind of throw them into the fire and say, you know, here's the list of expired? Subway go do it and provide them, you know, kind of some training and some scripts. So, so we used to run a more routine, uh, a more more structured training program. Um, yeah. I'm going to tell you that when we ran it, actually more structured as a training material, uh, they didn't last. Yeah. So now, now what it looks like if you were coming on board, Mike, I would, I would, you sit next to me in my office. You know, we, I give you our boomtown information on how to learn our, our sales CRM system. Um, you know, we go over our rules of the pipeline, you know, like, you know, our rules of the pipeline, when we're making calls, we call you three times in a row, back to back to back third call. We leave you a voicemail and then send you a text message and an email, right? That never changes no matter who you're calling, when you're calling or what person you're calling. Yeah. So, so from there we go over a little bit of scripting. I'll do a couple of calls with them and then I, I'm going to throw you in. I want to hear you like you're going to suck. You're not going to be great, right? You're going to stumble. You're, you're going to, you're not going to come up. You're going to probably whisper, Hey, Hey, this is Nick good. You're like, you're going to whisper a little bit, like, because you're afraid of that, that rejection and that f- failure. Yeah. And I want to see the person who's going to bust through that. The ones that don't are always going to just kind of stumble and, and kind of flop around and, and maybe they'll just be average. Um, but the good ones will, will, will start absorbing, start tweaking start implementing. Yeah. And then, then their business will take off. Love it, man. Dude, this has been 
fire, brother. I so appreciate you uh, coming on and kind of opening up the kimono of your business and showing everybody. Uh, I knew what you guys were doing. Um, you know, you guys were doing that at a high level, and I need to add some value to our audience, and you certainly have me. Uh, how can everybody connect with you? Man? Like, if somebody wants to learn more about, you know, um, about the logistics of your business, or uh, maybe you have questions about EXP um, or anything else for that matter, how can people connect with you? The best way is go to my website, nickgood.work. So you can go to nickgood.work and it houses everything in there. It's got, it's got more videos about our team. Um, you, can, you can connect to my calendar and, and schedule a call, whether that's to learn more about eXp, whether that's to learn more about our lead generation. We can talk shop. I can talk shop all day. Um, so yeah, nickgood.work. And then of course here on Facebook, it's just Nick Good. And you can, I'm bouncing around that 5,000 friend mark. I try to delete people every day. So just follow me on there and send me a message. Awesome, man. Yeah, I can really talk about lead generation uh, for hours on end. I kind of geek out on that stuff. Uh, I love hearing these stories week after week because I know that the company, the show is literally changing Asian financial lives. I only included. Do me a favor. Go someone that's right into your podcast. Please, please, please share it with them. And if you like the podcast, go to wherever you listen to the podcast and make sure you press that subscribe button. If you want to jump on a call with me, free obligation, you can go to eatmikeball.com. And, and that's it for this one, folks. Nick, thank you so much, man. Thanks, brother. I appreciate you. Absolutely. All right.